All right. So uh, my name is Helen He. I am going to talk about using Cori KNL nodes. Uh, the materials of this presentation are prepared by Steve, Genji, and myself. So outline, um, we'll talk about compile, and some KNL basics, how to compile, how to link, how to use MCD RAM. And then we talk about how to run on KNL nodes, uh, especially about process thread affinity and memory affinities and available um, different cluster and um, memory nodes. And we'll show uh, lots of uh, script examples and um, general recommendations of running jobs. Um, next topic is about compiling. Um, so we'll talk about um, available nodes. Cori has uh, two types of compute nodes, Haskell nodes and, and KNL compute nodes. So uh, assume most users are familiar with already compiling, running on Haswell nodes. <coughs> Just want to compare um, to Haswell nodes what our Cori KNL nodes have. It has much slower um, CPUs and more CPUs per node and also a smaller memory per CPU. It has longer vector lengths, so um, we need to explore. <coughs> it also has complicated memory hierarchy, especially when you consider MCD RAM and different cluster mode, um, it's when, when that is, is a part of the option. Um, so I talked about one of the top points is that, so binary is built for Ken Haswell. If you bring a Haswell binary, you can run it on Kena already, but it won't be optimized because you didn't explore longer vector lengths or didn't explore more of the threading options. But it at least runs, but not vice versa, because of the new instructions introduced um, in Kena, uh, <coughs> intrinsic um, AVX 512. Um, so on Cori, the situation is our configuration you may hear about some other um, KNL nodes, they have your, uh, the ability of compile on KNL nodes. Even if it does, it'll be much, much slower. So we don't recommend that. Especially for, for NERSC um, query configuration, we, we have a different setup of the OS um, image on our compute nodes so that compiling on KNL is not supported. So we have to do a cross compile. Um, we knew we have to, to compile on the logging nodes. So, um, slide. So this slide doesn't show up well from converting from um, PowerPoint to, um, to Google, but Google, yeah, but, but if, I mean, you have seen it in the previous talk. Basically, um, there's, the, the MCD RAM mode setup is relevant to both compile and runtime on Cori, so I want to just briefly mention it. And the cache mode of the, of the MCD RAM setup is that um, <coughs> It's the, the high bandwidth memory is considered the cache, and it's, so it's transparent to users. And the flat mode is that you will want it to manipulate exclusively, that you can um, put um, your memory, code memory into the uh, high, high MCD RAM. Um, there's uh, different ways of accessing it. I'll talk about more details in the later. And there's also a hybrid mode that you can do half-half or split 75%, 25%, different ways. Um, so when we compile, remember on Haswell, we always tell you, our users, use uh, uh, Craig provide the wrappers, because wrapper provides lots of good things for you. It automatically um, <coughs> links, for, for example, it, it links all the, um, if you load some Craig specific modules, say you, you load Craig CDF, you load some things, the wrappers will load or link to those libraries automatically. And the wrappers will also find um, the MPI libraries, uh, create um, scientific libraries. They'll link uh, for it automatically for you <coughs> so that users don't have to explicitly add those paths. So um, the, de the default compiler um, also user environment is the Intel compiler environment. And um, if you want to use a different compiler, you, all you need to, do it, need to do is module swap program ENV Intel to say program ENV Cray. And to compile a Fortran code, you just say ftn my code dot f90, um, cc little cc for C code and capital CC for C plus plus code. So what it, it does actually one thing it just, it's, it's behind hood is that it there's a module called CrayPE dash target. So on Haswell logging node is CrayPE dash Haswell, and the wrapper will link the um, x for Haswell it'll link dash x core AVX two. Intel compiler, 
and it'll link basically it'll link the uh, the corresponding uh, target for the machine type into the the wrapper so that the, the binary you build is target for that architecture. And for for the Cori KNL, that module is uh, if you want to build a target towards the KNL, you want to create P, load CrayPE mic KNL. And so this is what the next slide is about. So now we, we try to build a, a KNL target binary on Haswell login node. All we need to do is so this is the best recommendation we, we tell our user to do if you want to do that. You do module swap CrayPE Haswell to CrayPE mic KNL. And then just go on with the wrapper, and that's that simple. <coughs> the wrapper will take care of the target for you. They're also linked to the corresponding KNL libraries if it's available. It's, it could be a Cray provide library, or it could be a NERSC provide library. We have the module um, configuration set up so that it'll look automatically for the, that specific target. So another option is, um, Sometimes the user wants to build a binary that can run on both targets, um, on Haswell and on KNL. So Intel compiler has a flag, specifically um, means that I want to build a, bi a binary to target for multiple um, architectures. So the flag is you put in dash AX, and then you put mic AVX512, um, um, meaning uh, it's, it's KNL, and core AVX2 uh, is targeting for Haswell so that your binary now actually runs on both architecture. It is very small overhead runtime, and I'll figure out now your current target is, and I'll choose the branch of binary to run. However, we, we, we just know that it's not as good, because, for example, some of the libraries um, under the hood, if you have, when you compile, if you are under the Haswell environment, it will only pick the Haswell branch of that library, for example, the Intel MKL. So the recommendation is not is still try to swap the module as the previous slide mentioned. The, also, the disadvantage of the second option is that it, this only works for the Intel compiler. Now about how the link. So um, the wrapper we already mentioned about the link to the libraries, but the, this topic is about whether you should link to a Haswell library or link to a Kena library. Um, in fact, uh, not all the libraries or the create provide softwares or NERSC softwares are rebuilt for KNL because most of them actually don't make a big difference. So for, for example, not performance critical libraries or some IO libraries, basically we just reuse the Haswell um, library. Sometimes we build, we would put a pseudo um, folder there, but it's actually a link. Pseudo directory is actually still linked back to KNL, uh, to, to Haswell. So most of those will be actually still linking to the Haswell library. And if there are performance critical libraries, then you want to link, um, uh, link to the KNL. So either Cray would provide those or NERSC would provide those. And so be patient, not, not everything is ready. But if you do need something, you, know, you can send in a ticket to us, we can work on this um, you know, um, in a higher priority. But some of them, for example, are like Cray Lipsci, FFTW, Petsy, um, the third party scientific library, they already have uh, special builds for KNL. And for, for MKL, um, it, al it also has uh, tar KNL target optimizations, but there's a special note that when you want to use it, you, want, you need to link with uh, libmem kind. So there are two, two kinds of link that, so that um, we'll have um, another slide um, later. Um, the point is that base, uh, users, you do, you do not need to um, prepare library for KNL. Only if for your own application, you, um, you would use the, the module swap or the AVX, um, the AX um, option to build for KNL. And if you need some space libraries, let us know. We can help. So this is the convention of NERSC software. We use user common software and a software package, the version number, and then either Haswell or KNL, and then the different compilers. So that's, there's an example of PETC. 3.74, it has both HSW and KNL uh, with Intel compiler. There's also a different compiler, other compilers. Um, so these libraries mostly built with the AX, AX um, option, for, for at least for the Intel compiler. And under the hood, it'll choose the correct target. 
So if you see sometimes you see another package, it does show KNL, it might be a link, that's okay, but it, at least for user, the whole building process will be smooth. Um, so there is one issue related to cross-compilation is that some of the software build systems, you need to run a small test system at, uh, during the building process. For example, you need it to, for that to generate a make file. So that will break because that binary you already built for KNL, it won't run on Haswell. So there are a few workarounds, um, two of those. One is autoconf. What you want to do is you do your configuration step still under the Haswell environment, and then you do your small test um, program there. After that, mm -hmm. you swap to the Mike KNL, and then the make you will actually run with the flag will compile so that you get the correct binary. And for CMake, uh, Cray has worked out with the CMake vendor that things version 3.5.0, and there are two, there's just a simple um, commands. You export Cray OS version equals six, and then you define CMake system name is Cray Linux environment. Then uh, there's no uh, cross compilation issue for that. All right, so we talked about basic compile, basic link. Now I want to touch upon the MCD RAN. So M MCD RAN will be talked about in the programming compiling uh, part and also about, also again, in the uh, running jobs part. part. For compiling part, um, it because it depends on how you want to use in different uh, modes and how you want to link. Because some of the way of using it, you need to link to a spe specific memkind library. That's why it's in the uh, compiling part. So uh, just to briefly re re overview, overview the MCD RAM, um, it has two ways to use it, cache mode and flat mode. <coughs> so cache mode, um, let's talk about it. So the cache mode, basically no change um, to make in code, in your build procedure or run procedure. It's, it's all um, taken care of by the OS um, um, <coughs> transparently and it's free. Um, so that's why um, the cache mode is uh, actually our default mode for, for many, most users. But we also allow users to explore different mode. To, so if you want to um, explore, uh, explore flat mode, what you want to do is, I want there are a few ways to, to, I want, um, to use MCDRAM. One way is say I want to put my um, big data into MCDRAM. So if you know it, MCDRAM on the node is only 16 gig. So if you know it fits in 16 gig, it's great. Then you just say um, S round, different options, and then numa CTL dash M1. So um, because the one, that um, numa CTL dash M1 means I want to force all my memory allocation into numa node one, which is the MCD RAM in the flat mode. Uh, there's another option um, for S round is mem bind. You say map mem one, and that's it. But if your memory is over 16 gig and you use this way. It, it doesn't, if it doesn't fit, it'll fail. So another way is if you know it's too big or if you're not sure, you can say dash P means preferred. And there's an, an um, S run option, S run option preferred map man as well. And um, the other option is, is explicitly say, I know my um, memory usage is over 16 gig. I also do not want the system to just put my first 16 gigs into there. I want to choose. I want to choose my heavy, big um, data into it. So what you want to do is you can you know, use um, HBW malloc to replace malloc. And there's a, that's, that's the C, C way of using it. And Fortune way um, for different compilers um, is different um, directives. So the first line is the uh, Cray way. You say the uh, van der, der memory and um, bandwidth, and then your arrays. And for Intel, it's say their um, attributes, fast mem, and your arrays. So the way it does is that it only works for the dynamic allo allocated arrays. So your um, stack of variables, fortune pointers, cannot go there with this method. So now this is how you change your program. And then we should talk about when you use libmemkind, how you um, um, compile, I'll go back to with that one, how you compile, and there are two ways. Cray has provided a Cray memkind module, and you load that module, and then again use the FTN or CC compiler wrappers. The wrapper will add these flags into the build command, 
it'll actually add dynamic. So then your, um, your generated out band binary is um, <coughs> dynamic. So by default, um, before, without the stash dynamic, was this is the, uh, the default way of the compiler usage. Most of applications are built static. So you may have lots of static libraries lying around. So building by, as dynamic may not be a, a you know, preferred way. So in that case, the NERSC has a module called memkind, and it, it links with memkind jmalloc without dash dynamic, so that you can still build a static binary. So, so I talked about um, putting into the cho your self-chosen um, variables into HBM, and then um, how do we choose? So there's a tool on uh, VTune. There's uh, also a VTune memory access collection um, option, so that it'll help you to um, diagnose which one is, is a good candidate for putting into um, the uh, MCD RAM. So I think Jenji is going to talk more about VTune later. <laughs> Okay, and um, Brandon and, and also touched upon this morning as well. So there's also another one uh, it's called Auto HVW Mem uh, Library, and for this one you, you you don't have to identify which one to put into H MCD RAM, but you say I give it a criteria. If this you know, variable is bigger than what size or uh, whatever size is, say I bigger than 4K or I, my size is between 4K and 8K in these examples, then I just load the module and then use some environment variables to set that. And then programming run, at, all, at run time, it'll take, it'll take care of uh, putting those into MCD RAM. So basically, I've talked about um, all the things about <laughs> I want to talk about, about how to compile. Just a, just a summary. Basic, uh, you build on logging nodes like you do now. And you use provide libraries. And if you need more libraries, let us know. And then the, the takeaway is that module swap CrayP has worked, and CrayP mic KNL, that's the um, easiest way to do, build. Or if you absolutely want a binary to run on both architectures and for Intel compiler, you can use another um, workaround alternative. Then um, keep in mind about using MCD RAM. We'll talk about more a little bit later. So any questions so far? Any questions in the chat room? No. All right. Um, then I go on about running jobs. So for running jobs, what we want to also always <coughs> emphasize is that there are so many cores, so many, you know, uh, 68 cores on a kernel node, and there are four hyper threads. So where you put your process, where you put your threads, is called affinity. So process affinity is you bind your MPI task to these CPUs. Thread affinity is you bind threads to the CPUs that are allocated to that MPI task that threads belong to. <laughs> and the memory or these affinities are essential. If, say, you put all your MPI tasks on one core, obviously you won't get good performance. So we want those to be evenly, nicely spread out, and then don't over um, allocate, don't bind onto different um, threads. So that's, that's, that's what we um, are trying to achieve here. Mm -hmm. Memory affinity as well, where you put your um, data. Sometimes you say, I want to put my data close to my, where my CPUs are, but MCD RAM is a little bit different. It has no CPUs, but it has high bandwidth memory. And, um, and then also you want to know which, in what cluster mode, what normal domain is, and allocate um, accordingly. This is the one thing we want to achieve, the good affinity um, for thread, process thread and affinity memory. And the other thing we want to achieve is that you know, we want to promote portability. So we, we know that Intel compilers have some specific, specific settings. We try to see if we can find another more um, portable way that, um, that works for all compilers, that the OpenMP4 standard we try to, to use. OK, just keep this in mind. And, and so we also mentioned about there's so many different cluster modes, there's so many different memory modes, and they, they're all going to affect the, um, the, the affinity. Um, so there's cluster mode, there are uh, the quadrant we used mo a lot. We said quad cache, quad flat. That quad means is the quadrant mode. You heard about in the first talk today. And for those, there are no, um, no, no, no numeral domains. Just, uh, 
one domain with all CPUs in it. And then we have sub numa domains, SNC2 and SNC4. There are now we can start to see more numa domains. And uh, the memory and, and different um, cache and flat. And when you say flat, you introduce another more <laughs> one dimension of um, numa domains. So I want to show you one of the uh, utility called HWL location. Basically, it provides hardware locality information. So on, once, once you're on a uh, compute node, you can run this. This is an example um, you got from Quad Cache. So here you see, you know, um, this is this is only one human domain, P0, is 94 gigabytes. And you can see that there are two core zero, core zero and core one. They, sh uh, they have individual L1, but, but they share L2. So these two are a tie. We try not to, you know, um, to allocate, uh, you know, around, around like break boundary of, t of a tie if you can, as much as you can. <coughs> so that's one thing. And another utility is Numa CTL dash capital H for hardware. And then you can, now you can look at how many CPUs, which CPUs belong to which Numa node, and their distance. So this example is the 68 core quad cache. And we say 68 cores, and we have times four, 272 logical cores. Or in Slurm's way, these, each logical core is a each CPU. So you have 68, core, 68 cores and 272 CPUs. And this is listed as below. So node zero has C CPUs from zero to 271. Although, so CPU zero and CPU 68, and then CPU 136, and then CPU, I think, 204. They're actually one CPU, that, uh, and then four hyperthread on that CPU. And then um, in the quad cache mode, the zero has, has all the memories, the um, 96 megabytes memories of DDR memory. The other 16 um, gigabytes of um, MCD RAM is not shown because it's, cha it's cached. It's not the like, like explicit memory, so it's not shown. And there's only, only one NUMA domain, or it's called NUMA node. So NUMA distance is zero itself to itself. Now we look at a, a flat node. The flat node, you will see that the very similar NUMA, NUMA node zero has all the CPUs and it has 96 megabytes. I'm sorry, 96 gigabytes. <laughs> um, and um, NUMA node one is the MCD RAM. Now it shows it has 16 gigabytes. And then from zero to one, so zero to zero is, is closer, one to one is closer, zero to one is like further. And if we look at another uh, mode, NS, SNC2, it starts to have like two numa domains split the uh, CPUs in half. From 0 to 33 is a numa domain 0. And then from 34 to 67 is numa domain 1. And each has six, 48 gigabytes. And same for uh, the HP, uh, MCD RAM is 8 gigabytes each. And now you have a total of four numa domains and the distance are as such. Um, it's, it's a sort of a matrix from which domain to, to which numa domain. Basically, you, you consider yourself the, you want allocated memories within each numa domain. And for HBM, you would, and the ways to run, to allocate your memory, we talk about um, numa, uh, numa CTL, the ways dash P, dash M options, you want to actually put in the correct numa node ID there so that they will allocate to the um, the high bandwidth memory. Right. So I mentioned about two physical cores share a tile, and we want void <coughs> task. This is a duplicate of slide. Um, so let's say, can I just run naively as run? I want to run 16 MPI tasks. This is an example. Say, I, what I do is I want to run 16 MPI tasks, and I want to run eight OpenMP threads per task. So this is like 128 total. It's within the 272 CPUs available on, on node. And <clears throat> 16 times eight seems a good number. And if on Haswell, I might have been using this alone and it works fine. So on Kenya, let's give it a try. So I say export OMP number threads equals eight. And there are two on OpenMP 
options. I want them to proc bind. Yes, I want them to see threads to bind to something. And spread is like, I don't want them to be cluttered together. And then I want my OMP places to bind to each CPU, each C threads. There are some other options. But then, I mean, it was with or without that. I, my point is that if I do S run S and dash N16, my executable, mm -hmm. and this is uh, the report of the, bind, the bindings, so you, what you get is the, the eight threads of task, um, MPI task zero, they're everywhere. They're all different cores. But remember, we only have, you're running 128 threads. So if one of the 16 MPI already using how many tasks, different cores, you are having like on the same core, two different MPI tasks on it. You're almost like getting this thing, two different MPIs, you're sharing a tie, it's a mess. What we want is this, mm -hmm. very, very clear ones. So I have say <coughs> MPI, um, this is one color, MPI rank zero and eight threads. I want, I want them to be, <coughs> so let, let me explain this a little bit more. So this plot, what I show here is, um, the, the first line here the, is all the red numbers are the physical cores, zero to 67. And then I, I give this number <coughs> here. So zero also has CPU, um, hardware CPUs, or logical CPU, mm -hmm. 68, 136, 204. So that's actually one. CPU with its hardware threads. And then there's the second CPU, 169, 137, and 205. So um, what I want is my first MPI rank. I want it to be on, um, because I have 16 total M MPI ranks, a, a total of 68 cores. Looks approximately one MPI rank should use four cores. So I want the, the, the MPI rank zero to be on these four cores. And then I have eight threads. So eight threads, I want them to use, you know, spread out. The first two threads will be on zero and 136. The second two threads will be on one and 137, and, and, and so on. And then this, is, this color is my second MPI rank, and my MPI rank one, I want them to be on cores from four to seven, and then my eight threads to be evenly, also because I use spread, I want them spread out to be on these uh, different hardware threads. So this is what I want. So what I want you to do is I said, I did that without something, it's so bad. So basically the reason is because we have 68 cores, it's not divisible. <laughs> it's <coughs> so all these LERM or the or default Linux, uh, default bindings won't give you a good binding. So we have to do something. The way to do that is you want to do dash C and dash CPU bind. I'll talk about more about how to set, what do you set these for. Once you set these, um, and then this is what we get. So now you get MPI, MPI rank zero, and uh, zero, one, two, three, to the, this, the hardware thread that I want it to be on. So um, the very general setting is that dash C is what you want to set aside for each MPI rank. The number of CPUs, the number of logical CPUs you want to set aside to each um, MPI tasks. Because um, uh, it's basically is 256. Because I'm using um, 16 MPI tasks, um, I'm giving it 16 CPUs, which is actually four physical CPUs. So four times 16 is I'm actually only using 64 um, CPUs. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm giving it 16 each. And then I want to bind my CPU to, to cores. So that uh, once I bind to cores, I'm allowing my MPI rank to float <coughs> within these cores. So let me show you here. So I'm giving it 16, means I'm giving it four cores and all these hardware threads um, within these four cores. I'm giving this 16 CPUs to my MPI rank zero. This is what, what this is dash C for. And then again, my next MPI rank also gets 16 threads, just like pre-allocated. And once you pre-allocate this number of CPUs, and then however number of threads, as long as the number of threads is smaller than that, um, it, all, it won't over, um, how do we say, over-allocating. And then and you, can, you can say I have eight threads only, then I would try to spread them, I would have the threads to be on zero, 136, one, and 137. 
But if I do have eight, uh, 16 threads, I'm OK. I can have each thread to bind on these. Although you can also allow threads to be, you know, you don't have to bind each thread to each CPU. You can allow them to, to migrate a, a, lot, a, a little bit if you want. That's like when you say dash um, uh, OMP, play, this is the OMP places. If you want to say it to be threads, then it's to one CPU only. If you want to say OMP places equals cores, then you're allowing your threads to be floating within these cores. That's the, the choices. You can also bind to sockets, um, other options. Anyway, so this is, this is basically our essential points is that you want, we, we want to our users to use dash C and dash CPU options, bind options. And to dash CPU bind, um, if we are, the, <coughs> the, the MPI cores, if you're not using um, more than 64 cores, you bind them to cores. Once you're using MPI ranks over 68, then you want your MPI CPU bind to the threads. And another um, essential runtime options we want our users to use is to use OMP proc bind and OMP places. Um, initially, we tell users to the this um, an Intel basically defaults to in proc bind to spread, and create compilers as well. But the GNU compiler has different um, usage of that, so it it won't it won't um, have a consistent um, you, like layout for users. So we recommend users to use true, and then we also filed a bug to Google compiler. They have since fixed it, but it hasn't been released yet. Then OMP places, um, you can use different options. So these are two. Um, so the, the first slide about um, essential runtime settings for process and thread affinity. And this slide is about uh, runtime settings for the mem, um, MCD RAM memory um, affinity. So I think we, I have already talked about um, these points. Uh, the red, if it's over 16, and um, yeah, so, so the um, dash M or just without preferred means um, I strictly enforce. And if you happen to be over, your, your um, application will fail. And then there's an, a preferred option down here. Right, this slide we want to talk about how do you request different modes. So we mentioned a few. Then actually there's a combination that you can you can choose whichever. And we set aside some most most of our nodes. And over six thousand of nodes are fixed at the quad cache mode. We have about 3,000 nodes that are allowed to reboot. So once when you um, request it, you can say dash capital C KNL, and then different new um, mode quad SNC2 um, others, and then the uh, MCD RAM um, cache flat split. Although I do want to mention SNC4 is not generally recommended, simply because it was that you have. You have four numeral domains, but they're not even because they're a total of 68. So you get 9977 seven tiles, uh, 9988 eight tiles per numeral domain. And it's going to be a mess uh, because you, uh, when you have 30, 34 MPI tasks and 36 MPI tasks each, and you cannot easily say there's another option you want to use, um, core specialization. I'm going to mention about it later. You will try to say, I want just to use the extra um, cores for this cost preservation, but, but Slurm doesn't support it nicely. So basically, we do not uh, recommend SNC4. Um, the others, you can say KNL, what other options. You can do SNC2 split. And then um, most likely, if you do that, your, your, your job will end up in the KNL reboot partition, which means if there's uh, currently no such mode uh, node available, mm -hmm. you will have to reboot wait for the reboot. <laughs> and it takes about maybe 20 to 40 minutes. I, I'm putting it in a, a program or I think um, depending on, on how it works. Sometimes if one of your, the node was already be, will, will be, um, how do we say? So, <clears throat> so you, your job will be assigned to the uh, reboot um, partition and you'll, pay, you'll wait. And once a job will be, 
and nodes will be allocated to you. The slurm is not smart enough that it will still allocate it to you even if it's not in the mode you desire. Then you, you get, in, get into this um, configuration stage. If you do um, Q monitoring <coughs> command SQ or something, you will see the state shows as CF, means configuration. And it even lists the, number of the, the node list that you have got already, but then job won't start. And, but, but the good thing is that it won't consume your wartime request. Say it takes 40 minutes and your wartime request is only one hour. You still have one hour to run after the configuration is completed. Okay, now I'm going to show you a lot of um, the job scripts examples. Um, the first one is the MPI in quad cache. And there are a few flags, just want to mention this example shows one node, do the petition to the regular petition, one hour, and you want to use scratch license, and you want to use reserve two cores for specialization. I'll mention that later in, in the later slide, what this is for. And then the, the, the most important thing is you want a quad cache node. Um, so even though this is an MPI code, we still recommend you say OMP num threads equals one. It is because some of the because when the wrapper um, compile, it'll sometimes link into multi-thread libraries, and you don't want those to to by default loads multiple libraries. Like Intel would use whatever number of CPUs, 272 <laughs> threads. <laughs> All right, so now you have, for this example, we have 64 MPI tasks and um, allocate four CPUs for it, which means actually means one um, core. One core, this is rank zero, and then the other core, you also have four CPUs, this is rank one. Because if you bind to cores, so the, the, the MPI task will bind to this core, but it also actually can freely uh, um, move within these core. If, if CPU thinks it need, it's needed. <laughs> so this is each of the core zero and core one. Actually, it is a tile, but it's OK for, um, for MPI, pure MPI ranks. You, ha you can have two different MPI ranks. The thing is, we do, do not want a thread from um, you know, rank zero in core one and a thread zero from for rank one in you know, like, like cross, cross um, boundary. That's not good. But the pure MPI code here is 64 dash dash C4. And in this case, the, the, the last four cores is not, are not used. <coughs> so here, I don't, I'm almost the same as the previous slide, but now I have 16 MPI tasks. So for 16 MPI tasks, if I want them to be more evenly distributed, I give more CPUs to it. I give basically uh, four physical CPUs, which is 16 uh, logical CPUs here. So the core 0, 1, 2, 3 is rank 0. And then all the way down to rank 15 is the, down to 63. And again, the last four um, are not used. Okay. This is still quad cache, so it's, the, the command is pretty easy. Uh, so this one, um, now I want to use different number of OpenMP threads. I want to use four threads. Here I haven't used in the, for this one, just add number of threads. But then uh, for um, 16, 64 MPI tasks. So again, I give it dash C4 means the rank zero will be here. And then four threads. There's no OpenMP thread binding at all. So the threads will you know, freely float within these uh, four CPUs. So the next one, then I give something. OMP bind equals true. OMP places equals threads. Now I want to, the threads to be binded. And I want each CPU actually pings to a thread. So with the four, again, 64 MPI tasks and four threads, that each thread, so thread zero for task MPI rank zero would be this one. And thread one of MPI rank zero will bind to 68. So if we do um, you know, measure or, or check our affinity, you will find that it will report exactly as it plotted. So which is the way we, we decide. We want it evenly and not over allocating and nicely distributed. <laughs> okay. 
So this is pretty similar to the previous one, except um, I have more threads. I have eight threads and fewer MPI tasks. So 16 MPI tasks, 16 threads. Again, I'm using the first 64 cores only, and I'm giving it 64, um, uh, 16 CPU, logical CPUs, but I'm only having eight threads. So, um, so not, if not all the cores within this will be used for, for threads, because I'm still binding threads to each CPU. So you will see that um, <coughs> thread zero um, to thread seven are binded, the, like those pink colors, these colors, this, those CPUs are actually idle and not used because I have fewer threads, um, eight threads, but I have 16 um, logical CPUs allocated to each MPI task. Okay, now flat. I think if the flat mode, if I'm not um, allocating anything to MCD RAM, it's the way of binding everything exactly the same, and the command will be the same as well if you don't use the uh, MCD RAM. And this is so the 64 C4 or 16, uh, you know, and so basically what we recommend is say you have especially the number of MPI tasks is you know two to the power or something. Just let's not use the rest four. And then, you, so you have a total of 256 CPUs to manipulate, and you give it evenly to each MPI task. That's how you figure out this, this C value. Um, so I, I don't have a, a separate slide for that. If I want to use MCD RAM, all I need to do is add to this option my NUMA CTL dash M, M1 or my dash dash MAM bind equals preferred something something. Just adding to here. For, because I'm, what I'm targeting is that for the quad flat mode, um, the NUMA domain uh, one is the HP, uh, it's the MCD RAM. Um, so I just want to quickly go over, you know, what the CPU bind and OMP places um, look like. So this is an illustration, a a core. <coughs> Actually, a, a, a tile. I'm sorry, a tile. So the top one is the core one, and then zero, if you say, the bottom is the core one. And core zero has CPU 0, 68, 136, 204, and core one has these. <clears throat> so when you say um, CPU bind equals cores, means a CPU can um, migrate within, these co within a core. But if you say CPU bind equals threads, then the CPU is binded to a particular thread. And you say OMP places equal threads. Again, that's, that means if I have a, if I, a open MP thread will be bind to a typical A logical threads, uh, CPU. <coughs> but here if I say OMP places equals cores, then in my MP, I can still have, say, um, four threads within this core, but then each of them can, can float around. <coughs> or, or I could have even one thread only in that uh, with that for that core, but if I say OMP places equals cores, that thread can still use any CPU during the um, execution. So that's just a concept of the cores. How do you bind? If you bind to cores, if you bind to threads, what are the in impacts are? Right. Um, so. I just want to give uh, this is a different topic. Basically, we showed all these, you know, batch scripts and everything. <coughs> what about if I want to run some interactive quick runs and do a big, uh, easy debug things? So the two um, capabilities available. One is debug. I think you're familiar with debug. The limits of running debug is the maximum 512 nodes, 30 minutes, and there are also actually we have. Um, uh, uh, on on Cori, on Kena, we don't have reserved nodes, but on Haswell, we. Used, we <coughs> uh, we have reserved nodes for, for debug, so it's easier to, to get. But so far, um, for Cori, uh, to get a debug node is not too hard. So we monitor, and we don't have reserved nodes for this yet. We monitor if it's needed, we can implement. There's a limit of 30 minutes and one um, job per user, and you can queue up to five jobs. So that's debug. Sometimes you have to wait, but the currently wait is not, is not uh, too long at all. There's another uh, capability, it's called interactive. The way to use it is uh, this another dash, dash it's, it's dash dash uh, QoS equals interactive. And very similar, 
However, it's much higher um, limitation. It's like per repo, you can up to you can use up to twenty nodes. That um, <coughs> and um, and then each user can only run one job at a time. Although you can, each user can still request up to twenty nodes, up to four hours. But the whole repo, there's a limit of whole repo. So sometimes you can get some uh, a node maybe because somebody in, from your repo is using it. But you can check, how, you know, SQ command to see who is using it. Um, the 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 goal for this is that once you submit that, either you get a node you request or you get reject, say nodes are not available. It's like immediate kind of response. So it's, these are good for um, for 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 uh, debug quick. Is, although those also, of course, is the limit because only up to 20 nodes. Maybe you need bigger um, size to do your debug. Then, then you can't use interactive. Just use debug. Um, okay. So, ne so next, a few um, set of slides. I'm going to talk about some of the recommendations of running jobs. Uh, Want to just pause a little bit if anybody has any questions? No. Right. Um, so recommendations. Um, first, I want to talk about um, use huge, use huge pages. Um, so we talk about compile. Nothing is there, just FTN or whatever. But the, well, for using huge pages, it's very easy. You just module load, create PE huge pages. The reason is that you know the default page size is only 4K, and lots of lots of tests have shown that using huge pages are beneficial. So we want we want you to try it out. Um, these applications that we show that. Um, there are lots of create PE dash huge page pages modules available, 4M, 8, 6M, all the way up to 512M. And we found that 2M generally is already helpful. Um, if we, you can try other mores, but but they start from 2M. And there's a um, you know there's a main page, you can check it out, have more information. So here's a, a, a plot on VASP of different number of nodes, and the red color is the um, performance you get from using huge pages. Not a big in an investment, but it's good achievement, easy and good achievement to use that. So recommend to use huge pages. And another recommendation is um, people are reporting different you know, performance variations. The reason is that if your um, job is as allocated to different number of nodes and they are everywhere in the routing, it could obviously affect your um, you know, MPI communication and stuff. So you want to, you know, control them to a more smaller set of, of cabinets of nodes. So there's a, a, a <coughs> concept called switch. It's basically about 384, one, two cabinets in a switch. So the um, Slurm can request number of switches you want and maximum hours, number of hours you wish you would like to wait. It's like sort of extra weight, but not necessary. Because if your job fits in back view, it's okay. But otherwise, you know, I'm willing to wait a little bit longer. Just say my jobs can have a, a closer topology. So that's how the, the it's, it's the um, the format. It's especially useful if you know you only have one switch and you now you really contained. Otherwise, you you can be allocated everywhere, right? And and if it's also helpful for if your your job does lots of communications. So that's a recommendation. Um, so the other one's called zone sort. So this is a recommendation, but it's also mostly already done by default. <coughs> zone sort, the issue is not called zone sort. Zone sort is actually a solution, a, a, a um, technology that applied to it. <coughs> the problem is that with the quad cache nodes, um, when time goes on, in the, the cache size, the <coughs> The, the, the cache conflicts will increase. The reason is that it does direct map so that the addresses, you know, module or the, the cache size, if they're the same, they are, cannot be on the same page. So they have to go, go out of, um, and come back. So um, all these would affect the performance. The zone sort, basically what it does, that, that technology is the, I, whenever my, it, now it's down by default at every time my job is about to start then it does sort the, the available pages for you so that you get the big pages first. And, and then there's a, options. You can turn it off. You can try to set it a number, different number so that it run in, you know, frequently during your S run. You can set a means how, however many seconds you want to run. So I think 
if you really want to try it, because the on is already the default, but if you really want to try, you can use the third option. So that's also a recommendation. And another uh, recommendation is use something called SBCast. So in back in the old uh, Torque mobile ways, uh, our it's, it's a default. So you have a binaries in your Luster or project, project file systems. And before your job is being launched, is they, the, the scheduler will, will copy your executable onto the image of the each compute nodes so that the start time that from like you do MPI something, they all, they all start about the same time. But without it, they could have a big delay. So our recommendation is if you have some jo a job, say, bigger than 1,500 MPI tasks, let's do a manual SB cast. I think we have a request in for Slurm that make it as a default, but not yet. So uh, what you do is say SB cast my code to some temp. The temp is actually on your uh, compute uh, mem node memory. And then you run your normal s options. And then the NUMA CTL, if, if it's a uh, flat mode. And then you do not run your own actual executable. You have to you know, replace it with the one you already copied over, so temp. Or um, if you don't use NUMA CTL, then you can do this in one step. Just S run B cast to this, and then at the end you actually do your, you still use your own executable name. So this whatever it does is basically copy your executable to the compute nodes before your job starts, so it can have a good start time. So S B cast, and then I also mentioned about dash capital S in one in those um, example slides. Dash dash capital S is a Basically, I w what I want is I want to preserve how many cores per node for just doing OS so that the rest of the nodes won't be disturbed. So that's a good, good, good concept. And things I'm using, say, mostly 64 cores out of 68 anyway, why don't I just use it? So I think probably just say S2 is good enough, and some people would say 4 or 1. doesn't matter much, it seems. But you can't, this can only be used for the S batch. You cannot use it for S alloc or S, because the S alloc actually, our implementation, it's already a wrapper. It's already a S one. So it, you can't, um, the, the, because the, the core specialization has to happen before you try to request your nodes or cores. So it only works with S batch. <coughs> OK, so that's uh, some our you know, a set of different recommendations, not in the general um, running jobs, especially not in the Haswell running jobs recommendations. So these are more specific to KNL. And then I also want to introduce the, um, WinERSC has a job script generator, so which should be helpful. <laughs> um, this is in the MyNERSC page. If you go to MyNERSC and then you go from left side search for jobs, uh, you probably have to expand it and you will see job script generator. It actually has options for Edison, Corey, Haswell, and KNL. And then it has you know, options. You can give it some job name, what time, mm -hmm. um, partition, all these things. And then, and then if you want to say quad cache, quad flat, and you want to say if I want to use pure MPI or MPI OpenMP, it'll give you a you know, almost um, ready to use um, job script. It's more complete now than before because before we, we don't say we don't have a job name or something you would want to add. You could still add to it, say I want to send my email address, you want to add something, my output, whatever. So this is, this is a skeleton um, script you can use and we recommend you to try it out. Um, then I was also want to touch upon how do I verify um, the, the affinities. So we have many ways of verifying. Um, affinities. Now we showed you all these plots illustrations, but there's also you know the command line or some other ways. So I want just to uh, talk about each of them. So Cray has given us something called X X T high. We've been using this a lot when, whenever we want to check if it's giving us good affinity. It, it's basically a hybrid MPI a open MP code and reports back um, task zero and threat zero is bind to which you know CPU or something like that. So for our users, we basically already um, 
pre-built those. So what you need to do is if my code is MPI code, or if my code is a hybrid code, and if I use one of Intel compiler, and if I'm on Cori, or if I'm on, I'm on Edison, just pick one of the binaries and stuck into whatever way you, ha you have set up for your application, and only just to replace your binary with one of those, and to check if I'm getting the uh, thread affinity I want. Then, if it's correct, it's all good, then replace it with your own binary, so you be sure that you're not being punished by you know, wrong over, over allocation and things like that. And so besides using XTHI, um, there's also two, um, for Intel compiler, there's a KMP affinity um, runtime environment variable. So you don't have to do anything. You just set that to Bobos, and you can use your own application if you want, and I'll you know, report something to you. And for Cray compiler, there's something similar called Cray OMP check affinity. You can set it to true, it also reports something to you. For both of those, they don't give you MPI ranks at all, because th these are open MP runtime environment only. They don't know about anything about MPI. So the way to you know, try to um, figure out what, so I have zero thread, zero thread one, how do I know they belong to the same MPI? So the hint is by checking PID. If they belong to the same PID, they actually belong to the same <laughs> MPI. Same for uh, Cray compiler here is also PID. Um, so then also for Slurm, there's also a CPU bind equals Vobos. You can put in there and then check out CPU masks. And for, mem for memory binding, and there's also memory binding equals Vobos. You can check your memory affinity. And also as um, there's a numastat-p, your process ID, and when the job is running, you can run that and check um, numa usage or numa you know, information. Right. Then, um, I'm going to talk about a few useful commands for just, you know, just find things around how many, you know, nodes available, where uh, my jobs are, things like that. So this is one basic thing is asking for format. And you give it format, which it gives to you is to give you the nodes in different, you know, um, features and the allocated, idle, other, or total, something like that. So in this report, what you get um, you get quad cache KNL feature 14 total, for example. Let's look at total. And you KNL 7 total, cache quad 52, <laughs> KNL cache quad 7846. They're actually all the same type. They are KNL quad cache. The order doesn't matter. Then, but then you know how many total you are. there are. And you could also check you know, how many idle if you look at the second column. There are only about 240 idle currently, right? And then if you dash C, it reports back the CPU. Uh, so it basically, it's this, um, the number of cores times um, 272. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, so this, the, the left side is probably more useful. This is one use command, I just want to point out. The other command is say you have a, job, um, a node ID, and you want to know what type of this node is. You can S control show node, and it report to you active features of this node. And when this node was booted, or something like that, or state this node is allocated right now, right? state equals allocated, something like that. And also, say if you want to know uh, a job ID, either your job or a job in the queue that you're curious about, you can run S control show job and that job ID. It'll tell you the job ID and the job state. So this job was queued when I checked. It was reason was priority. It's not reaching its priority. And when it was the submitted, which petition it submitted to, it's actually asking for something that needs a reboot. Um, it asks for 32 nodes, and where, where, you know, where this command is used to submit this job, and where this, the job was submitted from. Lots of information, so you can check. You can, sometimes you, maybe you want to save a history of your job, something like that. And then a few others, um, S account can be used to query many things that basically as account is a command to query the Slurm database. And sometimes you want to say, how many jobs I've ran like in the past? I can, you know, my username, something. And if you do S, S account man page, you can do, um, you, can, you can list, give a format, you can list all my jobs, you know, um, start time, end time, elapsed, number of nodes, all sorts of statistics you can gather from with S account. You can ask count some other users as well. It's actually 
It's not just for your own self that you are unable to do. And then SQS or SQ basically shows the queued jobs and their their um, um, requested I, um, all the columns that number of nodes QoS that the jobs the uh, have uh, requested for or the reason why this job is still you know in the queue something like that. And then, and then um, recommend you do some of these uh, main pages. And finally, I want to mention, so if your jobs use lots of I.O., and Burst Buffer is not part of KNL, but it's available. <laughs> so that, uh, available on Cori that, that you can take advantage of to use um, Burst Buffer for your I.O. For, um, to speed up. <coughs> and uh, please check out the web page to learn how to use um, Burst Buffer. Oh, I think I've drew two more slides about <laughs> current queue structures and for, for KNL, we have debug and regular, and basically, I mentioned about debug and regular, um, basically, there are number of, you know, wartime limits limit and number of nodes limitations like that. Um, so however, um, things July 1st, we're gonna charge, and, and we have already in, enabled all users, and we expect more users to, to come to Quarry, so we are adjusting um, and making changes. So up Possible changes are we're gonna um, remove this partition. Everything you request will be QoS. QoS equals debug. QoS equals regular or premium, something like that. And then we will, you know, we will give um, lots of. Uh, we will allow you to submit more jobs if you want. And we will also change the bucket a little bit. Um, the boundary one one sixty two gonna be changed to a little bit number, bigger number. But watch for announcements. Nothing is in there yet, and nothing is uh, solid or um, decided, but that's just possible changes. Yeah. And you may want, if for, the, for the, this one, if you use uh, QoS instead of dash P, you may want need to uh, modify your script, scripts for that. But we'll allow some, you know, um, grace period. <laughs> so we talk about charging, and how much it'll be charged is, there's a KNL based charge factor of 96 times number of nodes used times actual wall time. And there's an example of 100 node jobs, two hours, and will be charged uh, this many NERSC hours. And as comparison to Edison, Edison is 48, Haswell is 80. So again, and once July 1st comes, there are also another possible changes are we may give bigger jobs priority boost and discount. So look for announcement as well. So summary for running jobs, um, use dash capital C to request different types of nodes you want. Always use dash C and CPU bind with the SRUN command. And also use OpenMP um, proc bind OMP places to fine tuning your um, OpenMP threads. And for memory um, access, um, MCD RAM, use mem bind or NUMA CTL. And also take, um, so these are the, um, the high level running jobs. And, it, um, and also, I want, would like to ask you to take advantage of the job script generator. So all these things I've talked about are on these web pages. You can read more. <laughs> and uh, if anything you want to um, ask for help, just send us the ticket. That's all I have. Any questions on the Any questions? Sure. Um, oh, just to show that. Right. Okay. One second. <coughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, open up. I don't see that. So we have like a. Okay. Backing up a little, can you discuss the advantage to using Intel, oh. Intel versus GCC? Sorry, wait, can you repeat? So, uh, can you discuss the advantage to using Intel versus GCC C compilers, if any, for KNL? I think GCC works pretty well for KNL, right? Except that the runtime has this problem with the But OMP this has been just been fixed. <coughs> <coughs> we, yes, we, no, yeah, you, you know about it, right? Yeah, yeah, they, they committed it, but it's like in this... The it's, it's committed, it's somewhere in, the, uh, in their really, uh, how do you say, committed branch. So I asked them a question, when was this official release version? I haven't heard back. But then, uh, then we could tell users to use OMP proc bind equals spread for all three uh, compilers once we have that version. But other than that, I, for all compilers, what we recommend is, is that um, the Intel compilers, you know, it's for Intel processors. You know, it's always 
a good native compiler to use. But GCC is also available, and it's like for, for lots of app application packages. If your application can use both, try both. <laughs> it could be always different, and, and which, whichever one is better. So then the other one was, do you have info about how to use the MSR safe kernel driver? Does that work already? I think there's still problems, right? That's all the driver settings, and uh, we, we probably don't have it yet. It, it's it, you need to send us a ticket, and we can evaluate. It's mostly like um, the concerns of safety issues we have here. Yeah, it's like we, I think you need to uh, it, uh, specify which bits are read and writable, and that we need to figure out first. And it's not not available yet. Um, and then, can core and thread affinities be finally managed for jobs built with GCC? Can and which use Pose Express? Can Corey? I'm sorry. Can core and thread affinities be finally managed for jobs built with GCC? I mean, yeah, you just with GCC, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. but then also, which use Pose Express? I think we had some some studies mm -hmm. about that, right? And it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be. Any more questions? Yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs>